game was crazy, wasn't it? Well, YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's St. Graven here with another video. And in this video, I'm here to share my post-game thoughts from the game that a lot of y'all went to. Shout out to everybody uh, that went out to Jacksonville for the game. And but and then a lot of us watched together. Shout out to everybody that was part of the live stream. Um, but it was quite a game uh, between the Ravens and the Jaguars. But here, I'm here to share my post-game thoughts uh, on this game. Uh, and shout out to the Jaguars. Congrats to the Jaguars. They clutched it out. They clutched that, and they showed, they said, hey, we, we are men. Now, real quick, let me know if I'm wrong, but I believe that, remember in, I want to say it was Carson Wentz's rookie or second year. Remember the game where the Eagles, they came to play the Ravens. It was at M&T Bank Stadium, and the Ravens, they were winning. Then the Eagles, they started coming back. And the Eagles had scored a touchdown. They could have kicked the extra point to tie it up, but the Eagles, they decided to go for two. Now, I believe C.J. Mosley broke up the pass and it was incomplete and the Ravens won, but I believe the same coach, I believe it was Doug Peterson, but let me know if I'm wrong. I'm not a thousand percent sure, but I believe it was Doug Peterson. So he, he did the same thing in this game. I ain't scared of no Ravens. We've been hanging with these boys this whole... And, and the thing about the Jaguars... We didn't get to do a preview for this game, but something that I had saw, and I said it at the very beginning of the stream, could not sleep on these Jaguars because they, in their wins, in two out of their three wins, they were blowouts. But in every single one of their losses, all except for the Chiefs game, they were all close games. And I mean, even the Chiefs game, they only lost by 10. So for the Jacksonville Jaguars to be rocking with the Chiefs to like only lose by 10 to them, says a lot about their team. Says that they can hang with some people. And, yeah, they certainly showed that yesterday. They did, they did a little better job of hanging with the Ravens than they did the Chiefs. And, and they, they didn't just hang. They won. They won. Um, and it's – where do we start? I guess we, we could start with the offense. When you look at the numbers, we'll start with Lamar Jackson. I know Lamar Jackson been a subject of conversation. Lamar Jackson, 16 for 32. So 50% completion percentage, um, 254 yards, one touchdown, no picks. He got sacked. Um, so, yeah, that's that. So the numbers – they don't really tell the whole story. Uh, Lamar, um, he did have some overthrows. He overthrew the very first drive. Very first drive, he threw a nice pass. Middle of, very first play, I think. Nice pass in the middle of the field to uh, Mark Andrews. Um, and then the deep ball. Oh, that, that, that was the one. That was the overthrow. He just overthrew about that much to Demarcus Robinson. And I was like, oh, man. Mm, mm, mm. It was like, wow, you, it was so close, but not close enough. So he overthrew it. Um, another one of the overthrows came to Mark Andrews. Uh, there was another overthrow to, oh, to Josh Oliver, that touchdown. Well, Josh Oliver dropped it, but at the same time, I cannot put that drop on Josh Oliver. I can't, I can't put it as a drop because Lamar, he sailed a little bit high on that one. So I can't put that on Josh Oliver. Um, so those were the overthrows. I know some people want to count that the Devin Duvernay one as an overthrow. I think that was just a throwaway. I really think that was just a throwaway. But the other ones were definitely uh, overthrows for sure. Um, but, yeah, so that was tough. But then at the same time, he did uh, make some of those deep passes. I know he had one of Mark Andrews, one of Josh Oliver. But then the biggest one of the game uh, came to Deshaun Jackson. And it's, it's crazy because... I said it when the Ravens first signed Deshaun Jackson that the Ravens are they counting on a 35-year-old wide receiver to be their savior. That's how you that's the status of these Baltimore Ravens, but hey, it is what it is. We we could talk about that another day. But he came up big on that play. It was a big throw, big catch, and I think I think Lamar misses Hollywood. I think he misses Hollywood a lot because Hollywood had more speed than pretty much everybody on this Ravens team right now. And you know that was Lamar's guy, especially for the deep passes. I think he misses him a lot because, again, the, the, the speed. The speed. Now, you still got you to hit the throws. You still got to hit the throws. But I think he misses that element of Hollywood speed a lot. But anyway. Shout out to Hollywood. I don't know how them Cardinals are doing. I got to check in on that game in a little bit. Because this is Sunday, by the way, when I'm recording. But anyway. Um, but yeah, Lamar, he, uh, he of course, ran. I know somebody in the stream was like, oh, Lamar was our leading rusher today. I said, okay, what's new? 
that's like usually nine times out of ten, Lamar is the lead in Russia. It's always nice when it's like Gus or, or Jersey Drake or somebody else who's the lead in Russia. So, but for Lamar to get it, it was no surprise. He had 14 carries for 89 yards, almost had a touchdown, but his knee was down uh, just short. Um, he, uh, yeah, man, he he did he did have some some drops, uh, and we'll talk about that in a little bit because uh, yeah, he had some more touchdowns that he threw. But like the one to Mark Andrews uh, in the back of the end zone, the one to Mark Andrews uh, going up the uh, the left sideline. Um, oh yeah, that, ooh, that was a, that was a pretty one too. Put it right in the bread basket. Mark Andrews. Um, the Devin Duvernay, yeah, Devin Duvernay. He had a drop. Um, who else had a drop? <laughs> it's crazy because when, when when Mark Andrews on one of his drops, I think he had three. But on, on one of his drops, oh yeah, he had the fumble too. That oh yeah, that was it. But thank goodness that the Ravens kept the ball. But on one of his drops, um, somebody was like, "All right, hey, it's time to activate Char Charlie Collard now." But uh, oh, his oh, this game was crazy. Um, the offensive line. Somebody made a really good point that on a lot of Lamar Jackson's throws, uh, he got to scramble, he got to run around because there, there's pressure that's getting in. Um, the offensive line, they, they up and down. Sometimes they up, sometimes they down. I mean, it's been, been a lot of story last year. I mean, this year, excuse me. Um, I think some, I think still, sometimes the offensive line gets a tad bit, they, they're good, they're not bad, but I think sometimes they still get a tad bit overrated because of Lamar, because he can make people miss. Because he can make those interior, exterior, edge guys, he can make them miss. So the offensive line, they won't get credited like with a with a sack or something like that. Cause Lamar don't make somebody miss, and then he threw the ball, or threw it away, or whatever. So yeah, but anyway, um, the Ravens' offensive line is they, like I said, they, they're not bad. Uh, rush rushes. Um, Gus Edwards, he had 16 carries for 52 yards. Um, he started off uh, the game, and he 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 was averaging like four yards a carry, but after that, the uh, the Jaguars are like, no, you ain't doing this to us no more. Because he got some nice little chunk plays, small chunks, but chunks nonetheless. He got a little chunk plays, and Jaguars, they adjusted, and they put it into all of that, all of it. Um, So they, they they not shut Gus down, but in the second half, they ain't really let him go off. He did get his touchdown. Um, But with the – yeah, it was it was just rough, man. It's, <laughs> it got rough for him. Uh. Devin Duvernay, he had a couple of carries. Now, I, re I was really thinking, like, all right, they, they about to get Devin Duvernay involved in this game a little more, baby. And they did. They did. Um, but my issue, because with, with, with Greg Roman, with the Ravens offense, um, my issue, obviously, one of the issues was Lamar having his overthrows. Um, but some, and then another issue was the team just having their drops. Uh, but another issue that I have... That is just so strange. Well, you know what? We'll talk about that another time. Um, anyway, uh, Justice Hill, he had a carry for three yards. Drake only had two carries for two yards. Um, so Gus and Lamar, they were really carrying it. There was one point where um, you saw just Lamar, uh, he was really just trying to take over. Where he was, you could tell he was just really frustrated. He was just trying to start to do everything himself. Sometimes when he does that, sometimes it can be good. Sometimes they can press a little bit. Um... But you can always tell those moments where he's like, all right, no, it's, it's all on me. It's all on me. A lot of times it works out. Sometimes he could try to do a little too much. But I think he's so used to having just to do so much in this offense, man. Um, and it's, it's crazy. But anyway, uh, let's get into these, uh, these receivers, man. Josh Oliver led the way <laughs> with four catches for 76 yards and a touchdown. Shout out to him getting a touchdown. Shout out to him this, this season. Because Josh Oliver, when called upon, he's done his thing. Um, so that's good for him. Uh, Deshaun Jackson had the two catches, obviously that big one uh, for that 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 sixty two yard game. Mark Andrews four catches for fifty yards. I don't know why I thought he had more catches than that. Well, he did have the two point conversion play as well. But um, so yeah, Devin Duvernay had three for twenty three. Demarcus Robinson had one for seventeen. He was targeted four times. Obviously, one of the targets was the overthrow. Um, off the top of my head, I can't remember the other ones. Uh, Pat Ricard, he had two receptions for fourteen yards. Um, Drake, he had a target. Gus Edwards had a target too. But I just, with Pat Ricard, um, he is on the field at all situations. When the Ravens need a big play, 
He's out there when the Ravens need a small play. He's out. Patrick Carter just out there all, all the time. That's why when during this game, when I saw him jogging off the field, I was really surprised. I was like shocked. I was like, oh, Patrick Carter actually coming off the field? It was just a, a, a shocker. Um, oh, Gus Edwards did have that fumble too. Forgot he had that fumble. Oh, man. What an uncharacteristic game fumble-wise for the Ravens. Gus Edwards, who never fumbles, he fumbled. Mark Andrews, who never fumbles, he fumbled. Um, just, oh, this game was just, it's so, it was so weird. It, it was so weird. Um, but anyway, um, offense just, it's like, it's weird because I really just knew the offense. I'm like, all right, the way that they started the game, they were so close. Oh, yeah, Demarcus Robinson had that drop in the back of the end zone. I forgot about that one. Um, so that was another one of the targets. But the offense, like the first drive, Lamar missed Demarcus Robinson. He overthrew him. I'm like, okay, cool. They, they, they close, but they ain't get there yet. Next drive, Lamar Jackson hit him. Touchdown. He dropped it. I'm like, ooh, okay. They close. I was like, all right, so they even. Demarcus Robinson and Lamar was even at that point. Cause Lamar missed him, and then Demarcus Robinson missed him. Next draft. So, all right, they even. But the offense was just, they could never really, like, really consistently get it going. Um, it's like they would move, then they would stop. And they would move, then they would stop. And then field goal, field goal, field goal. Shout out to Justin Tucker. Couldn't be mad at him when he missed a 67-yard field goal. And he almost made. Had it been a 64, he would have made it. Had it been a 65, maybe. I know the commentator was talking about, oh, if it was a 66, I don't know about that part. If it was a 64, for sure. But if it's a 65, maybe. But he, it's crazy that Justin Tucker, he even gave the Ravens a chance, man. Gave the Ravens a shot to still win the game. Shout out to him. Even with the miss, but he had the red, all them makes in the game. And it's like, oh, gosh, we, we getting back to that style of, of Ravens now. It's Justin Tucker, Justin Tucker, Justin Tucker, Justin Tucker, Justin Tucker. So, anyway. Um... That was the offense, man. Um, as far as the play calling, uh, not the worst day for Giro, I don't think. There were some situations where I'm like, the, the, just the involved, not the, even the involvement, but just the focus on a uh, specific guy, like Pat Ricard. The focus that they put on him, I think they should take that emphasis and that focus, shift it elsewhere. Shift it elsewhere. They... They, they, in my opinion, they, they got to stop trying to really... And I, I understand plays here and there. I ain't saying don't give Pat Ricard the ball, but they really have this infatuation with making Pat Ricard a playmaker. And you see the emphasis that they put on him with these screens and whatnot. And I, again, I understand he's going he gonna to get his passes and stuff. I, I get it. But I feel like the focus should really be somewhere else. Set up that screen for somebody else. Even if it's Josh Oliver. Somebody, because again, people ain't checking for him like that. They all checking for Mark Andrews. Checking for Duvernay a little bit too. Even DeMarcus Rock, they ain't checking for Josh Oliver like that. Just set it up for, for, for Pro Shake. Tyler Watt, like, but anyway, um, that was that. Uh, defense. Ooh, defense. They started off nice. They started off nice. Um, but then. Marcus Peters, oh, he was getting picked on all game. All game, uh, Trevor Lawrence was going after Marcus Peters. He did not have a good game. This year, he's just, it's been rough. And we got to remember, he is coming off that ACL injury. But still, you're out there. So, if, if, hey, if the injury, like, it, you got to have compassion for these guys coming back from being hurt. But if you're back, like, all right, you, you, you 100%, you ready to go? If you're going to be out there, you, you're going to get assessed. So, um, context is important, but still, he, he was out there, and it, it was just rough. It was, it was a really rough game for Marcus. Real, literally from start to finish, it was a rough game, and it just kept getting worse. I think they said he gave up three touchdowns. Now, the, the one at the end, the, um, the well, not the game-winning touchdown. Well, yeah, it was a game-winning touchdown, yeah. He was out of bounds. He got one foot in. He got, like... His shin, his shin, foot, whatever, the bottom half of his leg got in, but nothing else. Not no, his butt cheeks didn't get in there, not no elbow, not his back, nothing. And they said touch, I was like, wow, okay, well, oof, it was rough. It was rough. But then, my thing, where it was a mix of, this, this game was a good mix of bad execution, so that's on the players, and there was some bad coaching by the Ravens, too. Why? Why on earth? Um, big, biggest play of the game at that point, 
Because Lamar and the offense, they had just got the go-ahead uh, touchdown or whatever. Um, so then the Jaguars, they end up converting, moving the ball down the field. Then they got the, the touchdown that put them down by one. So they were going for two. Ravens called time. This is ugh. how do you call timeout and you leave your the worst corner that you have on the field? Why would you leave him on an island? You had Marcus Peters and Marlon Humphrey on one, and you had Brandon Stevens all by himself. Why would you leave him on an island? I was like, wow, this is crazy. This just really happened. They left this guy all alone. All alone. And I, I, I just, I, I couldn't believe it. But I could believe it. Because we've seen this story before. But, again, Marcus Peters, rough game. He did give up the, he gave up the game winning touchdown, even though I don't think it was a touchdown. But he, he gave up a touchdown before that, too. Gave, oh, that was the third touchdown that he gave up on that, uh, not a wheel route by the running back, but the running back just, I guess a streak. The running back just ran right past him. Marcus Peters said, oh, that, that's a nice pass there, Trevor Lawrence. Right over his head, touchdown. Mm. Yeah, man. Trevor Lawrence picked on him all game long. All game long. Pass rush. Um, it was up and down. Like they, they got, I think they got four sacks, which is, it looks nice. But when it mattered the most, couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. Couldn't get it done. Um, oh, just ugly. Ugly, ugly, ugly. Lamar had a fumble that he lost. Saying that he lost a fumble. I don't remember it, though. I don't remember the lost fumble. Hmm. I'm sure I see it in highlights. Somewhere. You know, they're going to show highlights of this game. Like, they... they <laughs> this is ugly. Um, Chuck Clark. Chuck Clark definitely helped on that uh that Marcus Peters touchdown, the one to uh the the Jaguars running back that Marcus Peters gave up. Cause that was both Marcus Peters and Chuck Clark. Just let the guy run right past him. Just watched him. They were just spectators uh on the touchdown. Um Patrick Queen, he had a really nice play. He had a really nice tackle for loss uh early on in the game. Um but I, oh, Ravens just they they couldn't get, they just started giving up. So and I, I I guess like I I knew Kyle Hamilton would be missed, but I didn't know that he was gonna be missed this much. I'm like really like is, is Kyle Hamilton like that nice? Is he that much of an impactful player on this Ravens defense? Cause I'm like ain't ain't, ain't no like ain't no way just Kyle, Kyle, Kyle Hamilton being out is gonna hurt them that much. Ooh, it, I guess it did. Cause boy, they I don't know what that was, man. And I think that what they gave up 18 in the fourth quarter. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. And that's what that that's what the money is, baby. That's what the investors, that's what the most investments are. But here's what it is, man. Um who got the sex? Uh oh Bowser, oh Bowser had that one where he forced the fumble on Trevor Lawrence. That was that was a nice one, man. Shout out to Bowser. He whacked him. I was like, oh, okay, let's go, Ravens. Um who had the other one? Calais Campbell, he had one. Oh, yeah, that was his 99 sack. So, yeah, remember that one. Broderick, oh, Broderick Washington had one on their very first play from offense. The Jaguars' first play from offense, he had one. And that backed them up eight yards. And then it was second and 18, and they got the first down. <laughs> so, that, 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 that should have been the sign where we should have known it was going to be a long defensive game. Uh, Marlon Humphrey, oh, yeah, he had a sack, too. And that was a sack where he, he, he knew the Jaguars were coming back. He knew they 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 had a they found a weakness on their defense because you know how Marlon Humphrey whenever he gets a sack whenever he makes a big play he always go like this and hit his head and hit his helmet and whatnot he ain't do that when he got the sack that was the calmest big play I've ever seen Marlon Humphrey make because he knew he 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 knew he was probably like oh my goodness I'm so glad I got this sack because this, this this Trevor Lawrence kid man he's some he's some so anyway man um. Oh, man, what a game. And just, that's, you would think, like, <laughs> you would think in a game where Jordan Stout literally punted the ball one time. This dude had one punt. You would think in a game where he punted the ball one time. That, that's a blowout. Oh, man, Ravens' offense is really moving. Because they weren't moving. They just weren't finishing. They weren't finishing. And that's a big issue. Ravens' offense just wasn't finishing. I, I just, I wonder. 
if people think this is a Super Bowl team now. Some people, hey, some people may feel the same. Some people may feel a little different. But you got to close stuff like this out. The offense, they didn't do the defense any favors early on. And the offense woke up quite a bit. Then the defense, they didn't do them any favors late on. So just a big collective effort in this loss. Um, bad loss, bad game. Um, yeah, Ravens are 7-4, and four, though. So it's not all bad. Uh, they tied with the Bengals, but they still sit atop the AFC North because the, they beat the Bengals earlier this season. Um, I was saying during the stream, it feels like the Ravens are on this like collision course with the Bengals. Um, they they were up on the Bengals. Felt like the Bengals were like almost out of it, but they just been they coming they've been coming back, coming back, coming back, and now they tied. Got the same record as the Ravens. So Bengals putting that pressure on Baltimore, man. Ravens had. This easy schedule. This, uh, <laughs> I, try, I try to tell these boys. I try to tell them. Ravens got an easy schedule, but Ravens still got to take care of business. And I did not expect them to go undefeated the rest of the way. And I, I didn't think they were going to get their loss out this early. But it's the Ravens, man. Expect the unexpected. I guess they feel like, you know what? We got to lose at least one game in Florida every year. We got to lose at least one. So this year they lost in Jacksonville. Last year they lost in Miami on a Thursday night football. I guess it's just... It's just a Raven type of thing, man. But anyway, that's that. Now it's about how they can bounce back. What are you going to do moving forward? How are you going to treat this loss? How are you going to respond to this? What adjustments are you going to make? We'll see. Team Keep It Clean, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And just like the Ravens, uh, when it came to being one of those teams atop the AFC, I'm out.